Today's video is sponsored by Handheld Legend. What up peeps? Welcome to today's vlog. It's your garlic boy here and I'm calling myself that because I ate way too much garlic last night and uh, yeah, this has never happened before, but I can literally taste it still. It's like 12 hours later, I've been tasting it. It's not like, uh, it's not like I just taste it in my mouth. It's just kind of like <sighs> the essence of garlic <laughs> is everywhere and it sucks because it's kind of embarrassing. I feel like I probably smell like garlic and there's worse things you could smell like, obviously, but it's still kind of embarrassing and uh, it sucks. I have, after eating garlic, I roasted a bunch of garlic last night with some carrots and Brussels sprouts and it was really good. I didn't think about it at the time, but I probably ate way too much and it's just, I don't know, it's not good. I've taken a shower, I've brushed my teeth, I've used mouthwash, I put on deodorant, and I did all the stuff that, you know, I would normally do, and it has not seemed to help with the garlic. So hopefully for today only, I'm the garlic boy. All right, so we have a bunch of discs that we need to potentially resurface. I have this stack here, a couple stacks back there. I'm not sure if that's in frame, but uh, our machine can do 50 at a time. So I'm gonna show you guys the process of how we go through and check. That's gonna be sped up though, and uh, we'll get these things ready to go. So we now have our stack of exactly 50 discs. These are the ones that surprisingly did not need to be resurfaced. Um, normally we only have a few, so that's awesome. And then these are the empty cases that we have and they're all in order. The reason I stack them the way that I did is because these get flipped over when they're put into the machine and then when they come out, they are in the perfect order to put them back into the cases. So it's all nice and easy. So we're gonna grab these. Normally I would use both hands so I don't drop them. And they go right down in here. Get them all on there. Close it up. And come up here. I'm gonna change this to 50 discs. That's the max it can do. Set it to DVD. We do everything on light. That is basically a level two or level three. Um, so I'm gonna hit start. They're all gonna run through. And then once they're done, they will be on the top there and we'll just pull this out take a look at them there might be a couple that need to go again but none, none of them looked too bad so this should be good so here we go for anyone who's been watching our channel for quite some time you'll probably remember hearing us talk about a website called Handheld Legend. We've been shopping with them for many years at this point and we're super excited because they reached out to us and wanted to sponsor today's video. So we just got a package from them in the mail today and we got some plastic and glass Game Boy Advance lens covers. And these are super, super awesome because anytime we are modding or repairing any Game Boys or DSs or anything like that, we always use Handheld Legend to get our products. So if you're into that kind of stuff, I would highly recommend that you check them out. And they're super awesome, and they have offered you guys 10% off an order of $30 or more. All you have to do is use the link in the description and use code SICKCOOPER at checkout. That's S-I-C-C-O-O-P-E-R at checkout. That's 10% off 30 bucks or more. So thank you so much to Handheld Legend for sponsoring this video and you're gonna see some more orders from us coming in pretty soon. Okay. Testing. Smash Bros. Mm -hmm. This is being traded in right now. Okay. And we're always low on the new 2DS and 3DS stuff. And he got it from us. Yeah. <laughs> so he He's over there. <gasps> oh, I showed the customers. They didn't consent to that coupon. 
I'll, I'll blur them all. <laughs> no. But yeah, I just have to test all the buttons and stuff on the touch screen. Having fun? Yeah. Good. I, I thought I died just now. What's going on, guys? We have a staff pick for you today. Well, I do. And it is Transistor for the Nintendo Switch. I, pl I play this game on Steam, and this is made by Supergiant Games, who also made Bastion and Hades and another game called Pyre. Um, I've beaten this game, Bastion and Hades. I didn't beat Pyre, I didn't really care for it too much because it's a different style of game, but the other games, all amazing, including this one. This one, I just sat down, got addicted to it, played it from start to finish. Um, you play a character named Red, and this is Transistor. It is the sword that she carries around. It is a very like sci-fi futuristic type style game. And it is the same style as Bastion and Hades where it's isometric and um, I feel like they took a lot of inspiration from this game to make Hades where it's like very fluid combat and you have different abilities. Um, and also like Hades, this game you get these different powers that you can combine and as you level up in the game you get like more slots to unlock and like combine different powers together. And you can make some really broken combos to just wipe out enemies and make the game as easy as you want. Or you can just experiment and just see if there's something fun you want to play around with to create cool effects. Um, basically, you're just trying to solve a mystery and um, play through these levels. It's I, I don't think it's a roguelike. I think it's just all the same every playthrough. But there's like challenges and stuff you can do too. Um, so there's like not just the story, but there's also like these challenges where you can, I think you unlock things. It's been a while since I played it, but this game is so insanely fun. The story is amazing. Um, narration um, is like Super Giant Games is very well known for their like voice, um, voice acting and stuff like that. And their music, all amazing. So if you like Super Giant Games and you haven't tried this, please do. It is super good. So we got a package from Vast, which is one of our distributors, and we got everything in the system. So I'm just gonna go through and show you real quick. We got a couple of these GameStop exclusive Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak Collector's Editions with the Amiibo and uh, Mario, the guy that, it's it's funny, his name's Mario, but he's, he's the, I guess the president or whatever of Vast. Uh, he told me that GameStop called him and was like, hey, we have a bunch of these in our warehouse. Do you want to buy them? And he was like, heck yeah. So we were able to get some, which is super cool. We also have the PlayStation desk mat. We have a couple little Pez things, some of the 8-bit plushies, the Piranha Plant lamp, restock on some Amiibo. And then we have some Switch games. And I think we've had the majority of these in stock before. A couple of them might be new ones we've never had, but I think these are mostly just restocks. But some cool stuff overall. Game Factory 4 special units. Yeah, a couple of them, but overall, some cool stuff. Hey, Abby. Hey, don't talk to me like that. Hey, Abby. Yeah. I got a package in the mail. An eBay package. Okay. You want to see it? Sure. Come look. I'm going to show you and the peeps. Come on. Come on. Oh, gotta hurry. Oh, yeah. You see? Mm hmm I bought this on eBay, mm -hmm. and I think these five are condition upgrades. Very nice. So, a bam. So, I got this off eBay. It was newly, newly listed. A um, couple games there. Manual, and then most of these are complete. I think... This one was missing a manual. I think the rest were complete. Um, these three are definitely not condition upgrades for me, but I think that these five are. So I'm going to take those ones home tonight and look over uh, my copies and compare them and then bring the other ones back. But yeah, this is super cool. I paid 250 with free shipping for the whole lot here, which is a pretty good price because most of, well, these three, and I think those two and that one, they're like over... They're like over 60 to 70 bucks a piece. So 250 for everything I thought was really, really fair. And they're all in pretty good shape as well. In a world 
where people bring in their old games for money. This is Double Jump Video Games. Some pretty classic stuff here. What makes a game a classic? That's my question for you guys. This is Ariel's mini question of the day. But ding well, The title is hidden for this one. It's Phantom Pain. A bunch of uh, PSP little guys. I always thought it was interesting that some of them come in these little cardboard sleeves. Super Mario Land. <sighs> what makes a game a classic? Uh, a lot of these seem to be like, oh, we've got some anime here, which is always classic. But like, I think of this game, this game is getting a remake. Um, this game is getting a classic, uh, or no, not Persona Q, but uh, like three and four are all cut one on the Switch. love the Pokemon anime, <laughs> or at least I do. Grew up on that. Like, do you think they'll ever remake Guitar Hero World Tour? Would they ever remake Epic Mickey? Or any of the Super Smash Brothers games for that matter? The idea of like a lot of the Wii U titles, which were not, you know, I mean, they were good games, but on unsuccessful console, they got moved to the Switch so that people could have a chance to play them. It's just an interesting concept to me. And like, would they ever remake the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, The Game? Or is that something that is trapped in the past for forever? Dark Cloud, um, the first game is, you know, <laughs> it's just a game. Like, I don't remember having much of a story at all. And Dark Cloud 2 took it, like, way ahead of it, had voice acting, like, um, so much amazing music and a really deep storyline that was just not present in the first game. Final Fantasy X, remade a couple of times. Oh, hey, here's Dark Tower 2. Please play this game. It's very good. Oh man. Cooper likes us to kind of spread out what we talk about, but I, I just can't not talk about Silent Hill 2. It's such a classic. It's such a good game. Like, if you want to talk about classics, this is a classic. There are so many different symbol, symbolic, like, story hooks in here. So many things that you can discover and find. You can relate to James. You can hate James. You can relate to Maria, to Mary. Like, uh, and like, no wonder people have tried to remake it. People have tried to redes you know, redesign it, do everything. Is the new remake going to do justice to this version of Silent Hill 2? We just don't know until it comes out. Uh, and I'm interested to hear what you guys think about the idea of trying to recapture a classic. And then we've got like Farming Simulator 15. And yeah. <laughs> Also a classic, I suppose. Yeah, not much to talk about for me here, but something to think about, I suppose. What's up, guys? We have a question of the day, and this is a two-parter. Second part will be tomorrow, but part one is, what is a horror movie that doesn't have a video game adaptation that you would like to have one? So, mine, I guess I would be, like, Chucky. I think that would be cool. would be very dark and I think that you could find a lot of like funny ways to kill people in that game so so you play as Chucky yeah nice I mean I guess it could be a survival horror too where you're just trying to evade Chucky but I think playing as Chucky would be fun yeah I would want a game based on signs because that movie is so creepy and who doesn't need more alien games that's true 
Okay. Um, final destination. Just. Yep. I mean, there you go. Okay. I've I actually, wanna... I've never watched the movie, but that's in. a horror movie that I know about. Because I feel like you could do a really good adaptation of Final Destination because you you always die. Like, that's the whole point of those movies is it doesn't matter how much you try to change fate, you're going to die because death is like out there and he's got your number. Um, but what you could do would be like your character has like visions and so you can riddle out how you're like supposed to save your friends based on the visions that you get or like the riddles that you it could be a really good survival horror is what I'm saying so yeah I agree yeah. with that 